Dad went to the uh, went off to fix the bill at a restaurant, and Mum just broke down and just started crying. I was like, "Oh, Mum, what's what's up? You know, what's what's going on?" And she said, "Nick, there's something I've been meaning to tell you." And and she told me that Dad had been suffering from depression for it turned out a couple of decades, and she kept it a secret for my brother and I. Poor dad for going through such tough times, but poor mum for being the one that had to shoulder, you know, this this bird to, to be the only person really uh, that was there for dad. So that has basically begun my journey into uh, mental health. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome to another episode of the Finding Equilibrium show. Delighted to be here. Delighted that you're here and delighted that my guest today is Nick Hudson. And Nick is the founder and the CEO of the Push-Up Challenge, something which is close to my own heart because I love doing push-ups. So it's, uh, it's great to see you, Nick. How are you today? I'm very well. Thank you very much for having me on, Lawrence. I have to admit, um, when you said we were going to catch up and have a little bit of chat, I didn't know this was going to be recorded uh, visually. So I'm not sure if I shaved too well for uh, for today, but uh, I'm very, I'm very glad to be here. I'm excited to talk about uh, about things uh, about things with you today. <laughs> Don't worry. I think uh, I think in this kind of um, lockdown world that we've been in and out of, we've all learned not to shut any off shade for a week. <laughs> so don't worry. You look, you, you look you're looking good. Uh, anyway, oh, so, 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 so Nick, you're in um, you're on the west coast. You're in Perth at the moment. If I if I, if I remember that correctly, is that yeah? Right? I'm in uh, I'm in sunny Perth. We've, we've had it pretty good over here. Um, COVID's largely escaped us for uh, the last well. 18 months, and um, every time I talk to someone over east, I, I, I tend to yeah, slip that in a little bit. It would be pretty good. <laughs> and I could see yeah. a little bit of jealousy there. But it has been uh, over, over here, we've sort of forgotten. Uh, we, we probably lack a bit of an appreciation for just how hard the East Coast has had it. Um, it's been pretty tough over there for um, some of you guys. Is that right? It has, yeah, it's been tough. I mean, I think there's like levels of toughness. I think when you look across Australia, so like the yeah, Melbourne's had it the yeah. toughest. You know, yeah. I'm in Sydney and we've had it next tough, but then we didn't have it tough for a long time. And then suddenly yeah, it was tough um, in, in Queensland, I think, and and uh, and, we're, and WA um, uh, and uh, the Northern Territory are, are are behind that. But yes, in these tough times, and it might be, it might be worth starting there. So the push-up challenge let's begin there so for people who are not familiar with um, with the push-up challenge first of all what, what is the push-up challenge and second question is how how did you develop it how did it uh, come come to be yeah sure thing so i know you're a fan of push-ups um and you probably know all about it. so the push-up challenge itself is, is a yearly event uh, and takes place in june where it has people completing a number of push-ups um learning about mental health and um, staying connected and, uh, and hopefully uh, fundraising for mental health as well. So it's a mental health initiative that started about five years ago. Uh, this year, uh, we had a lot of people taking part. Um, and it's just grown year on year, which has been absolutely fantastic um, for myself and the team to see that grow. Um, and yeah, we're really proud of how far it's come. Uh, in terms of its origins, how, how far back do you want me to go? Do you want me to go back to the, to the start? That's the start. Yeah, I'm really curious. Wow. So, so let me just ask you one question before we before sure. we lose that. So you said a lot of people were involved in June. Like how many people um, were, were involved this June? Yeah, sure thing. So we had 174,000 people uh, involved wow. across Australia. Yeah, That's so amazing. number where we're, um, yeah, considering you know, we only started five years ago, I'll we'll say only five, it has been a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's had phenomenal growth, which has been just it's quite amazing. Surprising. Yeah. yeah, if you'd ask me. So, um, so it began. Uh, oops, yeah. oh, the sound's going a bit funny, actually. Um, don't know if it's my yeah. end or, or your end. I think we're back. <laughs> Might be my end. <laughs> Are we back? 
Yeah, hello. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, all right. So let, Should we go again? Kind of, yeah, so let, let's kind of, I'll, I'll just kind of finish what I said before. So 174,000 this year, which is phenomenal growth, amazing growth. So how did it start? Take us right back. I'm really curious to understand. The how did it start? Yeah, okay. It was pretty simple origin. So back in, um, so five ish years ago, um, it was about June. And uh, so, yeah, middle of winter. And myself and my mates, you know, we, we may, may have let ourselves go a little bit. And we, we were trying to work out how to um, get our beach bodies back out for summer. Uh, so we challenged ourselves to, to do a lot of push ups in a month. Um, and we started doing them and we found that uh, there was no way to really sort of check up with each other. Um, so, you know, how would we know that everyone's doing their push ups? So, I, you know, we, we found a little app online and, and we were recording our push ups and we're screenshotting this app and, and putting it in, a, in a, a WhatsApp chat and something and saying, oh, I've just done 20 or I've just done 15 or whatever it was. And, and that was becoming a little bit, a little bit uh, laborious. So, we thought, so I thought, all right, well, let's, I wonder if we can develop an app um, to allow us to enter our push-ups and, and see where, where we're all at. And so for, so I jumped online and looked at app development and I, I developed this, this little app um, for, for $200. <laughs> so for $200, develop this app, which allowed us to enter our push-ups. Now, I've got to tell you, this app was an absolute piece of garbage. <laughs> it was an absolute mess, but it worked. And... Uh, and the guys were using it, we're all using it, and it was kind of fun. And then you guys say, oh, what about if the app could do this? What about if the app could do that? And uh, and I say app, but I really mean a little website that sort of looked like an app. So we, we, we developed um, this app and, and then doing these push-ups, our mates saw us. They're like, what are you guys doing? You know, because we're doing push-ups at the pub or, you know, in the supermarket, <laughs> you know, wherever we could to, to squeeze in our target for the month. Um, so our mates saw us doing it. They're like, well, what are you doing? Can, can we get involved as well? Uh, and so I was got involved and I thought, well, hang on a sec, why not, why not turn this into something? Um, so I was quite passionate about mental health at the time. Um, and I thought, all right, why not, why not turn this into to an event where more people can get involved? What we were finding in that first part of the event is that it was really helping us stay connected. So during the day or during the month, um, yeah, we regularly be checking in with each other. So Mark, mate, how are you going with your push-ups? Haven't heard from you today. Julian, yeah, you've smashed yours out. So we were, we were constantly um, sort of chatting or checking in with each other during the day, uh, which, which was an un unexpected sort of side effect of the, um, of the challenge. So based on that sort of connection thing and the fitness thing, we thought, oh, I thought, all right, let's 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 turn this uh, into something bigger. So next year, the following year, um, put a bit more money behind it, developed some infrastructure, uh, made the app significantly better. Um, and we had over a thousand people uh, taking part wow. across, across Australia, yeah. Uh, in every state, which was something I was quite chuffed by. In fact, I still remember the moment where I found out that someone was taking part in it that I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's cool to think that it's not just my friends and, and family doing it now. It's it's you know randoms out there. So we had someone in every state of Australia, including one person in the territory. So thank you to that one person in the territory uh, for doing it to enable me to say that that year that we had one person in every state of Australia <laughs> taking part. I don't know who that person was. I should probably look them up and thank them. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, to have, to have a thousand people taking part in, in something that, that I created. Following that, um, so shortly after that uh, event, um, decided to celebrate, um, and, I, and I went over to to, to Bali uh, with a few mates um, for you know boys trip, uh, and that was fun. And out in the surf, out in the surf, I was I was paddling along, and I, and I realized I was really unfit. And I was like, oh, hang on a sec, something's not right here. This is, this is a, I don't know, a month or two after the event. I thought to myself, something's not right here. Got back to Australia, um, grabbed a, a coffee, which I very rarely, very rarely had. And my heart just started going nuts. It's like moving around in my chest and beating quickly and some, some mild pain. I'm like, hmm. 
And I remember just turning white from, from just the, the, the shock and the unease of, of mm. those feelings. I'm like, well, something's not right. Anyhow, being a guy uh, and being, I guess, a bit of a doofus, so I, I ignored that and all sort of suppressed it. And, um, and you know, the feeling went away. Uh, but the next day, I was like, all right, well, I'm still a little bit tired from the barley trip. I, I might grab another coffee. And sure enough, same impact. Heart started going berserk. I was like, all right, well, hang on. So I went and saw my GP and uh, GP then escalated to cardiologist and cardiologist told me um, that my heart was, was stuffed and I'd have to have work done to it. Oh, golly. Yeah, now I didn't, being you know, a relatively fit guy, active in the community, all that sort of stuff, um, that you know, I didn't like the idea of someone going in and messing with my heart. Uh, so I rejected that <laughs> cardiologist um, taking it. Now I went and saw another cardiologist who gave me exactly the same advice. <laughs> exactly the same. All right. Um, I still didn't believe him. So I went and saw a third one. <laughs> he told me to, to stop wasting my money on, on cardiologists and, uh, and go see a surgeon. So I went and saw a surgeon and, and, uh, and, and booked in to have my, um, have my heart fixed. Now, that whole period of learning about that, leading up to the surgery, I just hit dark times, just really bad times. Um, fell into a deep depression, started, you know, rejecting my friends, rejecting my family, just went to my own little space and, yeah, it was tough. Surgery went well. Um, obviously, you know, any... Any major surgery is hard to get through, but you know the, the health system did its thing, and um, all that was was really good. But coming out of the surgery, once again, I was still in a really bad way. And you know, you're loaded up on all sorts of painkillers and the rest of it, and you're stuck in bed, and and you, you can't do much. And I thought, well, hang on a sec, I'm stuck in bed. I've I've pretty much finished Netflix. <laughs> um, what what can I do? Um, so there, it's my laptop. I thought, all right, well, let's build the push-up challenge into something bigger. Let's let's see how big we can make this. You got a lot of good feedback from from the people who took part. You know, the thousand odd people. Sorry, could just back it up just just a minute. Are you there, Lawrence? I'm here. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, set a call come through. Um, so I thought to myself, all right, how how big can we make this? Um, and so there, with a laptop, I decided to to build it even further. Found a bunch of people to help me out. Some people who were, you know, good at high teas. People who are good at um, marketing, and uh, there from from my bed. Um, we built all this infrastructure and that year we had around 49,000 people taking part in the push-up challenge. So it went from 1,000 people to 49,000 people across Australia, wow. which was something that was absolutely blew my mind. That year, we also raised $2.5 million for mental health, uh, which, again, I was absolutely stoked by. So that was that year and then, then I was... Then it was I thought, okay, it's on. <laughs> let's let's make it big. Again, the feedback coming through is really positive. So how can we make this uh, even bigger? Uh, and so we went from forty nine thousand that year to um, one hundred thirty thousand uh, the following year uh, in the middle of middle of COVID. Uh, so that was in twenty twenty. And then this year, just gone. Uh, yeah, we had one hundred seventy or one hundred seventy four thousand people all pushing for better mental health as part of the event. So it's um, so in five years it's it's come a long way, um, and again never would have thought it would reach this number, but uh, yeah, quite quite chuffed it's incredible. with uh, how it's gone. Yeah. yeah, it's it's incredible, an incredible story. Thank you for for sharing that um, with um, w with us, and um, and the mental health angle was that because of your experience, like the dark days that you experienced, or was there were there other reasons as well um, to. Um, to attach it to that cause. Yeah, sure thing. So there's two main um, 
I guess it's been two sort of pivotal mental health moments in my life. That one um, being sort of the thing that really, you know, kick-started just my energy into making the push-up challenge huge. The original, I uh, started getting involved in, in, in mental health maybe about, about 10 years ago. Uh, now, Lawrence, I'm, I'm not a, you know, I'm, I exercise and the rest of it, but I'm not a, a health guy. In fact, you know, I'm an engineer. Uh, I work for a, <laughs> I work for a mining company, um, and you know my whole professional life's been around, you know numbers and Microsoft Excel, <laughs> basically, and, and doing all the things that that um, engineers do. But 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 uh, about ten years ago, uh, my parents were visiting me from from Melbourne, so they came visit me in Perth, and um, my and dad dad went to the. Uh, went off to fix the bill at a restaurant or something and and, and mum just just mum and I had left there whilst dad was doing thing and mum just broke down and just started crying I was like oh mum what's what's up you know what's what's going on are you okay and, and she said Nick there's something I've been meaning to tell you I was like well, yeah what, what <laughs> sure what's up and um, and she told me that that uh, dad had been suffering from depression for um, turned out a couple of decades and she kept it a secret from my brother and I just decided not to tell us and she's just you know and I'm there in shock because mum's just so upset and you know up, to, up until then it was a beautiful dinner great some parents and, and you know so I was like, oh, what's going on and um, dad comes back and, and dad sees mom and you know I started to cry a little bit and, and dad's like, oh, what's going on what happened and mum said oh I just had to tell him I had to tell him and um, and and dad's, dad said oh what, what'd you tell him and mum said oh, I told him I told him about your depression and dad's like oh okay yeah and he looked a little bit a little bit ashamed but you know, and we talked about a little bit, a little bit, and and I was angry. I was not not angry, angry, but I was I was disappointed. Mm. Why, mom? Why why didn't you tell me, Dad? Yeah, why didn't you tell me? And, and they didn't want to burden uh, myself or my brother with with Dad's depression, and which was, you know, super sweet, but absolutely unnecessary. <laughs> And poor, uh, poor dad for going through such tough times for for yeah. a long time. But, but poor mum for being the the one that had to shoulder, you know, this 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 bird to to be the only person really uh, that was there for dad. So that began basically begun my journey into uh, mental health. Up until that stage, I knew nothing about depression. I knew nothing about anxiety or or other. Um, dimensions of mental health I jumped on Google did all those things and yeah realized just how big a deal uh, mental health was mm -hmm. so that was uh, about 10 years ago I, was, I had a, I did some other things in the mental health area and it wasn't until my own experience um, that I decided to put sort of bulk energy into it and um, and, and, you know try and try and make a difference through um um, the push-up challenge it's, it's amazing um and the the money that you raise does that go to different charities or to, to um one specific one how do you allocate those funds yeah sure thing so um it goes to different charities so back in 20 oh, where, where, where are we now i get my years mixed up but back in 2019 and 2020 um the funds went to headspace the national youth mental health foundation uh, in 2021, um, it went to Headspace again uh, and also Lifeline and our own foundation, which we established the Push for Better Foundation. So we've partnered with, um, so we've grown from partnering with just one charity to, to three charities. Um, and obviously, you know, super chuffed to be uh, supporting um, these great national mental health charities. Uh, in, the, uh, in the first sort of big year, um, we raised yeah, two and a half million. Um, in 2020, we raised five million, and in 2021, 
um, just gone, we raised around $9 million for mental health. So it really, so as well as participants, you know, increasing the, the amount of funds we've raised for mental health has also increased, which is something, you know, we're very proud of. Yeah, it's uh, rightly so. That's uh, that's amazing. So, so what what are the plans for the push up challenge as as we um you know, as we look to a, a new year and uh, and uh, um you've got the the one event in June and but are you expanding from that as well? Um, so I'd love you to kind of share some of your your plans, how people can get involved with the with yeah, the push up sure challenge. Thing. Yeah, so we, we um we're always looking at ways to to make the event. Yeah, you know, better. Uh, but there's been the, the feedback we get is is absolutely amazing, uh, particularly from from corporates and schools. Um, so a lot of uh, I think it was over I think it was around ninety percent of corporates said that the push up challenge was was um, better than other mental health initiatives they've been a part of. Uh, workplace mental health issues being part of. So it's great for workplaces. Uh, great for schools and, and families and mates, uh, gyms, etc. Uh, workplaces in particular have embraced it uh, because they see it as a, as a way to you know, engage their people about the event, uh, about mental health, I should say. So, you know, through the event, the number of push-ups per day varies to reflect a mental health statistic. So this year's target was 3,318 push-ups, which might sound like a lot. Um, so 3,318 to represent the 3,318 Australians who took their own lives in uh, in 2019, the last year of uh, last year of, of data on this. So, so the so the push up target is a very meaningful target, uh, and then the number of push ups per day, yeah, changes to reflect the different mental health statistics. So, participants are learning per day about mental health. So, for instance, the target on one day might be 120 to represent. Um, you know, 120 minutes of exercise per day, uh, sorry, per week, uh, is recommended to help offset the chance for depression. Um, the next day, the target might be 45 to represent, you know, the 45% of people that um, suffer from uh, mental health illness, a mental illness in their lifetime. So, um, so it's very meaningful the, the number of push-ups, and through the app and through the website, we facilitate uh, that learning and that participation. So, yeah, it's great for workplaces and uh, and schools and the like. I love it. I love it. So the whole thing is educational. So uh, how long does it? How long does it actually last? Uh, it varies. This last. This, this sorry. This year it was twenty five days. Uh, next year it's twenty four days. Um, just lining up with sort of practical times uh, within June. Um, there's a bunch of information on the website about uh, next year's event. If people just Google the Push Up Challenge, uh, or go to pushupchallenge.com.au. Uh, there's a bunch of information there. We've had corporates, uh, for instance, Lawrence, we've had corporates with over 500 participants uh, involved in schools with even greater numbers. Uh, again, you can form your own little community uh, through through the event online. You can see how everyone's going with their push-ups. Uh, so it, it's pretty cool. And we've, we've had feedback that um, it helps not only generate conversations and, and um, improving mental health literacy, but helps people feel connected. Mm. Um, so when you've got, you know, workplaces with, um, you know, remote workforces or what do you call it, decentralised workforces, or even today with people working from home, uh, it, it helps it helps crews, you know, remain connected uh, or feel like they're connected. So that's that's something that we saw particularly in 2020 when COVID was, um, you know, at its, I don't know, everyone was scared, everyone was particularly uh, worried about COVID. There's a lot of people working from home at that point. Um, in 2021, we saw a similar thing. I guess things have sort of eased off a bit uh, on the COVID front. But uh, yeah, so connection is, is is a big part of the event. Yeah, it's huge. When I think about, like we talk about the five uh, pillars of um, of total well-being, and when I think about the push-up challenge, it ticks. I think it ticks all of them, actually. It's interesting because it's like the first one's mindset and, uh, and emotional well-being. So, so it's all about mental health. The second one is physical uh, well-being. So it's you know, clearly push-ups are going to be good for your body. And the middle one is connection, uh, what you've described. Then even the last two, because the, the fourth one is money. And um, what the good thing about push-ups is it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything. <laughs> That's right. And then time is pretty efficient, isn't it, in terms of, um, in terms of how well, you um, fit it in. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great thing. So what's the, um, I think the average... So the average number of push-ups per day, I think it's about 130 this year or something like that. Maybe the number's wrong. 
but you can split them out during the day, right? So some people wake up, stretch a bit, smash out 10 push-ups, then, you know, later on, 15 or five or whatever. And, and people swap out push-ups for other things too. So if people, okay. people, you know, throw in some sit-ups or squats. Um, this okay. year we had a, well, last year we had a 90, oh, um, I think 92-year-old um, take part, 92, it's something around that, 92-year-old take part in, in the event and she was doing wall push-ups. So it, it's very, it's very uh, okay. accessible that's, there. Okay, yeah. that's good. I was going to ask you about that. How, um, you know, how uh, strict are you on the quality of push-ups? So uh... <laughs> we, we understand that. <laughs> are you asking for a reason, Lawrence? Are you already trying to get out of there? Yeah. No. So, we're, we're, so, so we think variety is important. Uh, mm. And we certainly encourage people to mix it up, different styles of push-ups or different forms of exercise as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, let me um, acknowledge you, Nick, for the amazing work that you've done, and uh, you know, thank you for spending uh, 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 you know uh, forty minutes of your time with us and kind of sharing. It's an incredible story, incredible story. And if you think about what you've achieved in five years, years it's, it's um, uh, you know, it's interesting to see what. Uh, what's going to be achieved in another five years and um, what, what would you like wow. to see happen yeah. as you kind of think ahead that far like five years goes really quickly even though so much um, occurs in that period of time and um, do you see it going Jeez. global do you see it um you know what what's the um, what's the vision because you are yeah you're achieving you're impacting so when so i think 174,000 people participated those people have all got people in there proximity so there's going to be a lot more people who are going to be aware of it and so effectively you're getting to let's say close to a million people just in terms of awareness uh, and i know in the in the work that, that i do around well-being at work there is high awareness you know particularly around you know around um, the areas of sydney that i uh, that, that i'm uh, you know that i uh, frequent so uh, i'd love you to share any vision or, or yeah, okay. ambition Jeez, where we want to be yeah yeah well this year uh, you know I, I, I love my numbers so so this year to give you an idea um through the event over 240 million push-ups were banked um wow. online now if you look at the population of australia that's sort of the equivalent of 10 push-ups per australian if you look at it that way so i like to think <laughs> <laughs> i like to think that the event <laughs> yeah I'm not sure if it's fair to say this, but I like to think <laughs> the event uh, helped contribute to the health of the average Australian improving by 10 push-ups. But I think if we, if we could get up to 250,000 um, participants in Australia, that's you know, 1% of the population, which would be just massive. And, and as you said, those, those people have connections, they've got their families and mates, et cetera, and, and what they learn um, about mental health through the event could help permeate their circles um, and you know further improve the mental health of the Australian community at large. So not just you know, the event, yeah, it's, it's, it's focus on the participants, but in, in order to help educate and you know improve the mental health health literacy of the greater community. So I think if we get more people on board, um, then you know we've got a greater chance of you know improving mental health in Australia. Uh, and hopefully reducing the number of suicides in Australia as well. Um, and I genuinely think, you know, the feedback we get, Lawrence, is just absolutely heartwarming. And you know, I've talked a lot about numbers, but, but the, the stories, the feedback we get from participants, they, you know, they messages that call us with the most, you know, heartbreaking and, and heartwarming stories. It's just, it, which, which really keep us going. So mm -hmm. it, it's that stuff that's just, it's just really, really cool. So if you, if, so Lawrence, if you or any of your um, listeners or viewers know of any, um, you know, brands out there or corporates out there that, that might be able to help us in our journey, um, I think that we can have, you know, a million participants within, you know, the next four years, um, have, you know, a million people having taken part. Um, if anyone wants to help us in that journey, <laughs> feel free to hit me up, just look me up, Nick Hudson on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, or, or, or check, or check us out um, through our website. Uh, yeah, it'd be great to to to, to have some, have some help with this. Definitely, no, I'm sure we'll get lots of lots of um, lo lots of uh, people who'd be keen to help. It's uh, it's one of those things which is easy to do, 
um, and it does. And like you say, the connection that you get from it by all doing it together is uh, is a wonderful thing. So thank you, Nick. Thank you so much for um, for spending time with us and remind uh, remind us all of the um, of the website again. So uh, yeah, sure thing. So you can find me uh, on LinkedIn by just uh, looking up Nick Hudson. And my face on LinkedIn looks something like this. Um, or you can check out uh, the Push-Up Challenge website, push up, that pushupchallenge.com.au, or maybe you just Google the Push-Up Challenge. It should be um, pretty high up there. Yeah, that's how you can find us all on socials under Push for Better. Push for Better. All right. Thank you so much, and thank you, everyone, for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Now.